We are so lucky to live on this planet where we have an abundance of air that's breathable, water that's drinkable, an abundance of food to eat. The problem is that the Earth isn't invincible. What if something terrible happened to our planet, such that we could no longer live here? Where would we go? Well, out of all the planets and moons in the solar system, Mars is by far the most accessible planet, the most viable second home. Also, going to Mars isn't just about having a second home, it's also about exploration, this human curiosity to travel to other worlds and see what's there. Is it really possible to make Mars a second home? Could we do it? Could we terraform Mars? Well, in this video, we'll find out. I will give a timeline of the most plausible scenario, going to Mars and turning it to Earth 2.0. It's January 2029. SpaceX and NASA load five starships in Earth orbit with fuel and cargo for the mission to Mars. Loaded on the starships are AI robots, automatically preset to build habitats for humans. This marks the beginning of our journey to Martian colonization. Robotic settlers begin to build a base for a human colony. The Martian environment is hostile with dust and intense radiation. The robots gather Martian regolith, roll it up, make it finer, and load it into a 3D printer, which then melts the regolith to produce a large protective shell. This habitat will be used by the humans, who will arrive in two years, to protect them against a harsh Martian climate. When they arrive, the protective shell will be filled with inflatable pods, which can be loaded with life support systems and other necessary equipment. The robots will continue to scout for water extraction sites. Since there's no liquid water on the Martian surface, the astronauts are going to have to extract it from the subsurface, which contains ice. The robots will also construct a small energy facility with solar panels, and perhaps a small fission reactor, which then humans can use later on. The job of these preliminary robots is to prepare the Martian surface for the arrival of humans who will soon land with five to ten more starships full of cargo and the first human colonizers. It's now August 2031, the first day humanity arrives at Mars. The astronauts are further from the Earth than anyone has ever gone before. What will they do? How will they live? And how will they survive on the Red Planet? After the six-month journey in space to the Red Planet, 12 astronauts exit the starship for the first time and gaze at the magnificent Martian environment. The astronauts then set up inflatable pods from the cargo starships, filling them with pressurized air. They fit inside of a protective shell habitat, which the robots had previously built for them. Life support systems are fully intact. So is a medical bay, a gym, laboratory, and living quarters. They are now protected from the intense Martian radiation and dust storms and can live and breathe without suits, at least temporarily. The next step is to find sustainable sources of food and water. They extract water from the subsurface Martian ice. They drill the regolith and submerge a heated rod, creating a well of water ready for pumping and filtration. Next, the crew begins setting up the first energy grid. They install solar panels, an electric battery, and a nuclear fission reactor, which they connect to the pods in their habitat to keep the lights on. They are now able to make their own food. Martian soil is nearly ready to farm with. Its mineral content is nearly identical to Earth soil. However, they need to get rid of a toxic chemical called perchlorate as it dissolves in water. The astronauts will have to rinse the soil with water to use it first, or use perchlorate-eating bacteria which produce oxygen as a byproduct. Next, they set up a greenhouse in the protected pods filled with a variety of plants, the seeds which they took from Earth, mostly hydroponic plants, plants that don't need soil to grow. But the first edible crops are finally grown on Mars, a sustainable food source for the astronauts. They also set up a GPS system to communicate with each other and find their way in the Martian surface. Exercising will be a must, as the Martian gravity is only 38% that of Earth's. 
With that in mind, the first colonizers are able to survive and keep healthy on the planet. Within the next 10 years, thousands of more humans will arrive in starships with even more resources. Scientists, doctors, botanists, farmers, engineers, and architects will make their way to Mars. They expand on this initial Mars habitat, adding new food, new water, and energy sources, eventually digging an underground habitat. A robot powered by AI extracts oxygen from water on Mars. The robot uses materials found on the red planet to produce catalysts that break down water as well as CO2, releasing oxygen. This allows astronauts to produce enough oxygen to sustain themselves indefinitely. They begin manufacturing medicine, mining materials, and conducting experiments, expanding their presence on Mars. And by 2050, the first human child will have been born on Mars, marking the establishment of the first self-sufficient colony. The changes won't stop there for the Red Planet, the future of humanity will change Mars forever. It's 2060. Two million people now live on Mars permanently, but the environment is still harsh. The atmosphere is only 1% that of Earth's, and radiation is 17 times greater than Earth's, and there is very little free oxygen in the atmosphere. How can we terraform Mars to make it more like Earth's environment, and how fast will it take? Mars has tons of frozen water and CO2 locked in its ice caps and beneath the surface. If we could just find a way to extract that into the atmosphere. Nuking the poles of Mars by detonating 4,000 nuclear weapons in the atmosphere near the poles would generate enough heat to melt the water in CO2 ice and make the planet warmer by triggering the greenhouse effect. Enough water would seep from below and flow from the poles to form a 30-foot deep ocean covering the entire planet. But even if all the ice melted, the temperature of Mars would only increase by about 15 degrees Celsius, and the atmospheric pressure would only increase to 17% of Earth's. Still not enough to retain that water indefinitely, and not enough for humans to breathe in. Plus, simply nuking Mars would take centuries to see the results. There must be a faster way. Trapped in the rocks and minerals on the surface of Mars is oxygen in the iron oxide and carbon dioxide in the carbonates. We need to melt the surface. Laser beams can do the trick. Using the sun, an array of mirrors orbiting around the planet could focus a powerful solar laser beam onto Mars and melt much of its surface. That would heat up the planet by 20 degrees within 30 to 40 years and give us some oxygen to breathe. We could also target the specific areas we wanted to melt, but that still wouldn't yield a freely livable environment. An atmosphere of 99% oxygen is too high of a concentration for humans to breathe in. On Earth, it's more like 20% of the atmosphere. We also need nitrogen, which doesn't exist on Mars at all. However, a nearby Saturn moon, Titan, is extremely rich in gaseous nitrogen. We would just need to transport three quadrillion tons to Mars using perhaps machines to compress nitrogen gas into liquid and then shoot them into the Martian atmosphere. This could be done in two generations. Additionally, icy comets could be used to transport other gases into the atmosphere. So in 50 years, we would have a breathable atmosphere, a warmer planet, even rivers flowing on the surface. But we're missing another essential ingredient, life. Bacteria and plants are the key to terraforming Mars. They are natural emitters of oxygen and also transform the soil with their roots and enrich the environment. Bioengineered bacteria and algae farms could survive the cold and high radiation conditions where they can adapt and spread across the surface of Mars. They can even break down rocks and produce soil, creating a more nutrient-enriched world that is biologically friendly. This could be done within a reasonable amount of time. But the problem is, it wouldn't last long. 
as the lack of a magnetic field allows the atmosphere to slowly be stripped away by the solar wind. Mars needs protection from the solar wind to one, protect the living beings on the surface and also prevent us from having to continuously add gas to the atmosphere. The final step to making Mars truly Earth 2.0 is to introduce a magnetic field. Mars lost its magnetic field billions of years ago, but we need to reboot it somehow. The Solenoid Loop project just may work. Nuclear fusion plants powering superconducting cables stretching around the entire planet could generate enough electrical current to pulsate throughout Mars and produce a powerful enough magnetic field. This is hypothetical, but if it could be achieved, auroras would begin to light up the Martian night sky for the first time in billions of years, protecting all life forms on Mars. It's possible that by 2120, Mars would officially become a second Earth and home to tens of millions of people. By 2120, space travel to Mars should be efficient enough such that almost any person on the Earth could travel to Mars and live there permanently if they so choose to. The first Martian nation emerges with its own laws, its own order, its own justice system in its own constitution, a new beginning for humans, a new world, an amazing feat that demonstrates the human willingness to overcome challenges and to see what's possible, what is out there in the universe. I know of no other human endeavor that would bring out the best in us as humans than going to Mars. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please follow, subscribe, like, and comment to boost the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.